Hello and welcome to today's show. Today I want to talk to people about, <clears throat> still dealing with pneumonia by the way, um, I want to share with people how I approach this condition and some of the tricks and techniques that I do that have made my situation much different than a lot of people. For people with ME-CFS who see me and then they see other people with this condition, the one thing they kind of notice is there's a big difference between myself and other people. I don't seem that bad, yet there's a lot going on behind the scenes that people don't realize is happening. For people that know, and I've shared, I have been sick since 2006. Um, my condition was a result of an accidental nerve agent incident. Wrong place, wrong time. And as a result, I would become extremely sick. I'll show you a quick video if you haven't seen it. Oh, where is it at here? This is on our YouTube page. You can actually see I'm going to get rid of the sound here. But this is me about two weeks post the nerve agent incident. And what you're seeing here is called monoclonic jerking. This is a result of the nerve agent being inhaled into my system and wrecking my entire central nervous system. Um, But for people who have not seen that video, you can go out there and, and look. It's the 2006 nerve agent incident. Okay, well, let me go back to the camera. For people that know who Michael Schumacher is, okay? He's the race car driver for, I think it's called F1, the European circuit of race cars. And Michael Schumacher, was at the top of his game and he had a skiing accident and he disappeared after the skiing accident because he doesn't want anybody to see him well in 2006 after I got sick that's kind of what happened to me I disappeared for two and a half years and the reason is what you saw in that video um, <clears throat> I owned my own company which helped so I wasn't destitute but I was in a world of trouble and there really wasn't a whole lot of understanding of how the heck we deal with this because this can't this scenario was never supposed to have been able to occur but it did okay but enough of that so how is it that I am able to sit here today and have a different outlook on things than so many other people. Well, because I choose to. You know, a lot of people will sit back with MECFS and they will say, they will tell you, this is the worst condition ever. No, it's not. Now you could perceive it to be. But there's a lot of conditions out there that suck a lot worse than this, even on a bad day. You know, one of the things I do when I'm having a day with some depression or whatever, and I, I need that reminder of how lucky I am because I should have died from what you saw. The fact that I survived shouldn't have happened fluke even though it was a it was a it was called a 24 chem hit and that is about as bad as you can get before death but the damage is devastating to your system kind of like getting hit with radiation it it has a tremendous lasting effect on you but so what I do is when I'm having a depressed day or whatever, 
you know, I know they'll pass, but sometimes as a reminder, what I'll do is I will go out and actually, and this is going to sound bizarre to people, in order to remind myself how lucky I am, I'll go out and look at pictures of children with leukemia. And I will see what they're going through. And I use this as a way to remind myself how lucky I am to still be alive. You know, no matter how bad my day is, my day is better than hers. No matter how many times I fall, no matter how many times I, things I drop, no matter how frustrating my life is, it's better than this young lady's life. I can't stress enough that visual stimulation, it's a tremendous tool when used in the right way. There's so many people who will focus on their own misery, their own limited surroundings. Obviously, this is a picture of a child, of an image of a drawing as they do a bone marrow aspiration and biopsy on him. I can tell you firsthand this, as an adult, is painful. This, as a child, is terrifying. Never. <coughs> Our perception matters in how we perceive this condition. Mindset matters. The people that tell you mindset is not valuable or useful are telling you they're wrong. You know, when a miserable person tells you mindset does not matter, look at the person telling you that and ask yourself, are they, are they, what is their life like? You know, find people that are positive who are dealing with the same challenges you're dealing with. And, and look at what they're doing that's making a difference in their life in a beneficial way. Another thing I do, which once again will sound bizarre. I go and look at refugee camps. And I actually have a picture on my computer, on my desk, of the Afghan res rescue of those refugees who climbed onto that military transport plane as it was in motion trying to escape the Taliban. And the only thing they had to their name was their life. They didn't own anything. Let's see if I can find it here. Here's that picture. Air Force C-17. This plane was leaving. This plane was taking off. And these people were running oh, onto the landing gear. Oh, not the landing gear. The uh, I can't think of what we call it now. <clears throat> but that's all they owned was themselves. They had nothing but them and their children. You know, no matter what, how bad our life is, our life is better than these people, these children. Okay, that is something that I do pretty consistently to try to keep my mindset grateful for how lucky I am to be in the situation I find myself.
I made some notes. I'm not usually a note taker on this stuff. I'd usually just, as you know, run my mouth. But I think it's important to have <laughs> sort of a direction to go. The other thing I do that is completely opposite of what the ME CFS community does, I stay in motion throughout the day. I don't go to the gym and exercise. But what I do is I just, throughout the day, I'm constantly moving. I'm not laying in bed. I'm not laying on a couch. I'm not, you know, taking a bell and ringing it, expecting the world to drop everything they're doing and come bring me a cold beverage or something. I'm constantly up and about, moving, resting, moving, resting, moving, resting. And what that does is it moves your muscles, it moves your limbs, it moves your your brain. It, it does so much tremendous benefit to you. Because when you're in motion, it releases chemicals into your central nervous system that cannot occur from a stationary position. I get outside a lot. I don't care if it's raining. I'm going outside. I'm going outside to get fresh air. I'm going outside to feel the wind. I'm going outside to smell the air. I'm going outside to listen to the leaves. I'm going outside to get the sun. Am I walking very far? No. And understand, I'm partially paralyzed. So my ability to, to walk is, is extremely limited. I kind of walk like E.T., that's what my wife says. Just not as fast. <laughs> um, I don't take any drugs. I am not on any pharmaceuticals for any of my conditions with the exception of methotrexate, which is an injection I take because of another condition that I have to take, lisinopril from my heart, which is also associated with this other condition, and I take a, I can never remember the name, it starts with an A, but it's for my kidneys because I have kidney issues. So those are my pills. I don't take any. Now, I have a prescription for pain medication in case, but I don't take it. I might take one pill every 10 days, maybe one every 20 days. I mean, it, I, I don't take much at all. I sure as hell don't follow the instructions on the bottle. Take one pill every four to six hours. No. And the reason why it works for me is even 16 years later, it's because I don't do that. I take it so sporadically that when I do need one or take one, it works. <clears throat> my life. I've accepted pain as part of my life. I'm okay with it. You know, I've learned to manage it. I've learned to manage my emotions. I've learned to manage my situation. I've learned to manage a lot of things. And it's hard to do when you're strung out on drugs. You know, gabapentin, you know, Adderall, people are taking this, they're taking that, they're smoking pot, they're shooting up CDBs, they're, you know, they're vaping, they're drinking, they're swigging, they're everything. I don't do any of that. I just use a steady stream of trying to stay positive. Being grateful for how lucky I am to still be alive. A steady stream of remaining in motion throughout the day as best I can. Even though it hurts. Even though it's not easy. Now, is there a point in, at, during the day where I have to stop? Yes, because I start tripping over myself. For people that know, I'm like I said, I'm partially paralyzed, and I'm partially paralyzed from Guillain-Barre syndrome. So, and that was a result of the chemical exposure from back in 2006. I have what is called acute motor axon neuropathy, which is a variant of Guillain-Barre. 
which occurred in 2017, what was that, 11 years after the initial onset of the nerve agent exposure. So I talked about visuals, avoiding the drugs. I don't make excuses. I don't play the poor me syndrome card. You know, I don't dwell on the past. I mean, you know, what, before I got sick, I was, I was successful, okay? I owned a very nice company. I, I lived in a 13,000 square foot house. I mean, I, I was in a really nice position in life. And then overnight, I'm sick. But I don't dwell on that. Because money is money. I mean, money, don't get me wrong. Having money is a wonderful thing. Especially when you don't have it. Makes life easier. But. It. You know, I, I can honestly say getting sick changed my outlook on what was important in life. You know, having the Corvette I couldn't fit into didn't mean anything when I couldn't move. When I was fully paralyzed, that Corvette just didn't mean anything. And... Because the only thing that mattered was I wanted to be able to go home and see my children and not die. That's what matters. You know, our outlook is so critically important to how we perceive this condition. Don't make excuses. Avoid the poor me syndrome. Control your environment. That's a huge one. For all of us that have this condition, we know that as information is being thrown at us, and people with strokes know this, John Fetterman, the congressman from, or the senator, the newly elected senator that had the stroke who's from Pennsylvania, he's dealing with this right now. I mean, it's a serious issue for him. But when you've had a brain injury, which is MECFS, Brain meaning brain plus central nervous system. Um, how we process and receive information can shut our systems down. We become overwhelmed because we can't complete the cycle of the information. We're kind of like a computer that gets stuck. We just keep getting more and more information thrown at us, but we can't process the information correctly. Therefore, we shut down. I have learned over the years the importance of controlling my environment in order to control how I receive information. Um, I'm, I keep a very quiet environment. Um, I decide you know, I don't go out and do things like I don't go to the store at five o'clock on a Friday afternoon to go grocery shopping. You know, that doesn't work. You know, my wife and I will go grocery shopping at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. And then I'm just going in and grabbing a few snacks like Little Debbie's and Cokes and stuff. And I'm heading back to the car. I just want to make sure the priorities are covered here. And then she finishes up. Um, but one of the things that, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, you know, when we go from an outside environment to an inside environment, you know, say it's hot. You know, say we go from an air-conditioned car to a hot outside into a air-conditioned environment, say, like Walmart, and then you walk through the cart area, which has a low overhead roof, and then you walk out into this large space of 160,000 square feet with a 20-foot roof. Depth perception is how we're now absorbing. We got noises 
coming in all directions. We got smells, we got sensations, we got activity, we got confusion, we got... It doesn't take long for us to shut down. So this is what I mean about controlling the environment. Another thing I do notoriously is I use caller ID. Let's be blunt. There are people who can call you and you're okay talking to them. There are other people that call you and you know what, today's not happening. Yeah, sorry dad, I love you, but we're not talking today. I just can't deal with you today. <laughs> so I'm not gonna answer the phone. This has been a huge lesson that has served me so well over the years. You know, these little things can make a huge difference for someone. How we look at our lives going forward is what matters. It doesn't matter, you know, yes, it matters somewhat what, we're meant, what we had. But you know what? You can't dwell on it. You know, one day you go to bed fine, next day you wake up, you've had a stroke. Your baseline's changed. Your life has changed. You have to accept it. And if you don't accept it, well, misery's gonna persist in your life. I've always approached it this way, and it served me incredibly well. And like I said, throughout the day, I am probably moving two to three hours a day. I'm not getting much done, by the way. I'm just, you know, walking back and forth to the trash can. But that's moving. You know, I go outside and turn the flower pot, you know, and stand there and look at the sun. That's moving. Achievement isn't necessarily the goal. It's staying in motion that's the goal here. Now, granted, I'm in a better situation than a lot of people. And, and for that, you know, I, I was, I've been broke. I, I've been poor. I've lived in my car. I get it. I know what it is to go hungry. You have no... I appreciate it. I truly do. I know a lot of people are suffering. I really do. I know that people have done nothing wrong. And they're not being taken seriously. And what the medical community has done is absolutely criminal in, in most ways. But this is your condition. This is my condition. Whether we like it or not, we're the ones that have to figure out how to own it, how to manage it, how to survive it. And these are my tricks of the trade. I wish the world operated differently. It does not. But if you can find a way to implement a few of these techniques into your life, it won't happen overnight. Kind of like somebody that weighs 500 pounds and needs to lose weight. It's not going to happen overnight. But do you want to still be in the same spot you're in today in five years? I do not. I did not. Yet so many people who saw my video from, you know, originally back in 2006, they're in the same situation they were then as they are now. I am not. And it is because of my approach. I hope these videos, I hope this video helps one person. 
And I don't care if a thousand people view it. I just care that that one person views it. Who it's going to help. That's the other thing that's important about these conditions. We need to not be so self-focused. We need to be thinking of others. Because selfishness is destructive to ourselves as well as other people. And the other and the ME CFS community has a really bad habit of self loathing, having pity parties, making excuses, making it all about them, and not appreciating the challenges other people go through but also understanding how truly lucky in many many cases they actually are you know in even though we had nothing to do with becoming sick you know our living situation we played a role in you know if you're married to somebody who can't stand you why you know what are you doing that may be making that person not want to be around you are you a whiny whiny person are you a demanding person are you a are you a dem you know one of the biggest challenges that this condition creates is so many people refuse to do for themselves what they're capable of doing and they want others to do it for them i've never allowed other people to do for me what i can do for myself and it served me incredibly well you know as somebody who was fully paralyzed you know i had to overcome the challenge and you know i didn't follow the doctor's instructions i did what i had to do to get the hell out of there because i wasn't going to spend the rest of my life listening to this bitching moaning person beside me who didn't want to do anything for themselves we create so much of the problem that surrounds us by how we approach this challenge like i said i hope this video helps one person i appreciate your time thank you